Vikings fans, welcome in to another episode of the Skull Hop. I'm Evan. And I'm Austin. We're just a couple of dudes from Iowa. We like drinking beer, talking about the Vikings. Yeah, we do. Mystery beer. It is a mystery beer. We'll figure that out in a minute. We like this segment. This is, what, the third mystery beer we've done now? Yeah. 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 This this might just be a normal thing. It might become that. But before we get into that, we got to make sure we give a shout out to Big Top Ventures for sponsoring today's episode. They can get you the lowest rate possible on several all-inclusive resorts in Mexico or Jamaica. Big Top Ventures, step right up to your next big adventure. You can email them at bigtopventuresllc at gmail.com. And I think you were indicating that the email address is Yeah, I'm putting a lot of pressure on post-recording, Evan. (laughs) Hi, future Evan. Um, So yeah, you apparently now you have to or you can make me look super dumb right now and not put their email address right in front of us but we'll put it down there maybe we'll even put like a big ding 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 (laughs) ding. we'll figure that out yeah and i'm just i'm gonna keep saying it until i go i'm i'm literally a month away maybe like 35 days or however many a month away from going to cancun through big top ventures i couldn't be more excited we should when you get back we should maybe do a little mini segment and like just share with our viewers. Yeah, I was, experience. you know, I Take was going to brag on the show. I was going to do the whole FaceTime bit on the beach or by the pool, sipping my fruity drink with the umbrella and the I like it. The fruit cocktail just pouring out of it. Yeah, I, I that was that was my plan. I was going to brag in front of everybody. Just make us all jealous. Yeah. So you don't have to be jealous, though. You can just book through Big Top Ventures and you can go on your own. So I'll show you what it looks like, how amazingly beautiful it is, and then you can finally make the decision to do it yourself. Okay. Well, there. It settles it. You're going to bring us along. Yeah. Yeah, I have to, right? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's uh, let's get into our mystery beer here. This is week three of the tinfoil wrapped beer. Yeah. Cloaking its identity. Yep. And I... I don't think this is as good as the job you did last week, but I feel like I did better on the tinfoil job than I did a couple weeks ago. Well, let's be clear, because I think there are some techniques here, and we can go way down the wormhole on this, but <laughs> you have the smoothest looking... Like, if you are watching right now, and you didn't know that these were tinfoil wrapped, you might just think, huh, that's a plain can. Yeah, that's true. And so I think you do a nice job of preserving the facade of the can Mm -hmm. whereas i went for like bolstering it down and just like there's no way you're gonna figure out what beer this is Mm -hmm. and i had like two layers of tinfoil and it was all crinkled and yeah so different strokes for different folks yeah but either way still gets the job done and uh i'm excited for you to try this so it's a little unfair because i was telling you before we started recording i don't think i've ever had this beer before um, I have had beers from this brewery. I know you have too. I believe we've featured Exile Brewing on our podcast before, maybe a very early episode. So this is an Exile beer? Yes, this okay. is an Exile. Right. I believe they're a Des Moines area brewery. Yep. Um, and if we haven't featured them on the show before, I can almost guarantee both of us has shared together an Exile beer before. Too. Oh, we've, so, we've had them. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Episode six, their Oktoberfest. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I f- that was a good time. That like month of Oktoberfest slash Ambers that we had. We had that, a lot of those. That's going to be a, a, a tradition. I can feel it. As far as I can tell, that's the only Exile we've had on the show. Okay. So that was September. Okay. So it's been quite a while. Yeah. Can you, off the top of your head, think of any specific Exile beers? <sighs> and I won't, hmm. if you nailed the one that we're drinking, I'm not going to, it's straight poker face. So honestly, like it's one of those, like, I just, I can't oh. off the top of my head. We'll see if we can change Because I wasn't prepared. Oh, sure. That. Yeah. That was, but, I, I kind of called you out on that. That's I, okay. I didn't give you much. But, that's all right. So one and this will give you a slight hint on what this is or is not. The only one I can think of off the top of my head is their Ruthie. Oh yeah, which you, I'm sure you can picture the can. I've had, it's the yep. it's the I've had lady Ruthie. with her arm uh, bicep, you know, curl. Uh, it, this is not the Ruthie. Okay. Although That's the fair. Ruthie is a good beer. It is. It is a good beer. So let's let's crack this open. Let's experience it all. I want you to talk it out and see, tell me what you're thinking. All right. Here we go. And like I said, I have not had this one before. Um, it is one that I would grab off the off the shelf, regardless of doing this whole mystery beer game or not. And I'm excited to try it. 
So just based off the smell alone <laughs> and the comment you, that you just made, it's got to be an IPA. I mean, I, I'm not going to give you anything. Skull. Yeah, that's an IPA. Um, that is so good. Exile. Really good. This is delicious. See, we've had so many great beers, and we've tried a lot of great breweries that it's tough for me to nail down a name, but it it's an IPA. It well, is a hazy IPA. And you won't you I guarantee you haven't heard. Like it's not like you know, oh I have seen or drank this or heard the name. Like it's not one that I don't think you're gonna get the, gonna get the name. But Do I have the category correct? It is an IPA, but can you there's a few different kinds of IPAs. I wanna say it's either a hazy or a New England. Okay. Well, those those would be the ones that I would guess as some of the biggest, and those are the two that I feel like you would gravitate towards the most. Absolutely. So, it's hoppy. Yeah, it's got a very floral scent to it, mm-hmm. which is it's not as hazy as maybe a true hazy would be, which makes me think maybe it is a New England style IPA. Yep. Yeah. There is one other kind, but we won't we won't get too deep in the weeds. You, you got it. It's an IPA from Exile. It's delicious. Can you tell? Is it a boozy one? Is it a lighter one? Is it something you can try to... Mm, 6%. Sp- sure. Okay. All right. I think I think you nailed it. It's obviously an IPA. Let's, uh, let's unwrap these presents here and see how close you were. I can't even find the seam on this. Oh, That's man. how good a job. Oh, man. Doing. Tooting my horn too much. Oh, All right, Ev. The What's... Shark Wrangler. Didn't we have Peach Wrangler yeah. two weeks ago? Yeah. We're, we're just the beer wranglers over the here at the Skull Hop. Six and a half percent. All right. Yeah. Nice. Um, and my wife said that it looked like a bunch of Santa Clauses trying to wrangle the sharks. <laughs> I think to me it just looks like gnomes. That could be. They are wearing red and they all have white beards, but I think it's more of a gnome vibe. Uh, Exile, let us know. If they're Santa Clauses or not. It's uh, a West Coast. Yes, West Coast IPA. Uh, so it's got Simcoe, Citra, and Centennial. And if I had to pick a perfect IPA with any hops, I mean, those are literally the top of the list for me. So this beer is going to make me deciding what's in my top five pretty difficult because after two sips, it's already really delicious for me. It is. I like it a lot. Yeah, I like it too. And this is smack dab in my wheelhouse. You're, this isn't quite your wheelhouse, but you can appreciate a no. good beer no matter what. So, but, I, but and I think that's the beauty of what we do week in and week out is we try different beers and we try stuff that gets us out of our comfort zones. And, mm-hmm. um, this isn't necessarily out of my comfort zone, but it's just probably not something that I would reach for on my own. Yeah. So. I like it. Thanks are, for bringing it. Are you looking forward to the rest of them throughout the episode? Yeah. Because I absolutely am. Yeah. I, would... I think we need to get a couple more and fill these glasses all the way to the For top. sure. Oh, and I, we have them through the magic of preparation. Whoa. We got a few. Uh, Look at that. A few that I prepared earlier. <laughs> I only wrapped two of them in tinfoil. Um, but we'll just get these ready. Pardon the interruption while we pour more beer. And play the Jeopardy theme song. Ah, we probably can't afford that, actually. We'll find a ripoff somewhere. Could just do the the thing that I added to that one TikTok. The beep. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, this is really good. I would say it's maybe slightly boozier than normal yeah for an ipa six yeah. and a half percent yeah that's a good i feel like that's a good spot for an ipa to be in yeah you're not chugging these all day at the lake it's not an all day ipa from no. centennial no. um but yeah you, you're enjoying a few of these i am at least it's good stuff good stuff well thanks for bringing the beer yeah and I'm thanks excited. to exile for making the beer um one day we will be able to say thanks to so-and-so brewery for providing the beer um until then we can just say thanks to big top ventures for providing the beer money there you go there you go (laughs) well uh fun fact this is episode 40 yeah it is we've probably recorded a couple more than 40 
Yeah, this is episode 40 as we've published them, though. Yeah. So the 40th episode that has gone public. Mm-hmm. And, man, 40 episodes has gone fast. It has. So we didn't go weekly until the 23-24 season started. So we're a little over, just over a year of Actually, being the Skull Hop. Today is May 13th. Mm -hmm. In our first episode, episode one came out one year ago today. Nice. May 13th of 23. That's crazy. So That's wild. Hey, let's scold to that. We got to scold to that. That's huge. Happy Happy one year. We need to do that again. Yeah, well, I feel like I got your fingers. The fingers were in the way. There we go. That was a good one, though. Happy birthday, Skull Hop. Happy anniversary. Got a little beer foam in your beer. Yeah, I'm saving it for later. (laughs) Uh, We've been doing this for a little while, though. We've been... Trying to identify different players that yeah. have the jersey numbers that correspond with the episode number that we're on. So, mm-hmm. episode 40. Uh, Ivan Pace wore 40 this last year. Yep, he'll be zero, number zero this yeah, coming year. Now hopefully that, for many, many, many years to come. Now that Marcus Davenport is gone, mm-hmm. <laughs> which needed to happen. Yep. Uh, now, I, I think it's one of the current incoming UDFAs who has claimed number 40. I should know his name. I don't. It would be dead air for me to look it up right now. We'll get there. Uh, Rhett Ellison was also a yeah. tight end fullback for a while. Yep. Rhett Ellison came in right after another guy we'll name, uh, and he started off, Rhett Ellison did, as a rookie for his first, I think, two years wearing number 40, and then he switched to 85. I guess he was too cool for 40, or maybe he wasn't cool enough. I remember Rhett Ellison, when he, when his Vikings tenure came to an end, uh, I think his dad was pretty public in how he was not happy with the Vikings and how they loved the Giants so much more. I don't know. There's something Hmm. there. Look it up if you're bored. Well, there was one other player. The GOAT. Notably to wear (laughs) number 40, and he's perhaps the greatest Viking to ever wear 40. I I don't think it's a question. And he might be in some people's like top 10, if not even top 5, Vikings of all time. I, I mean, stat sheet, absolutely not. But as far as heart and soul and making other people's jobs easier, who what who is it? Ev? Jimmy Kleinsaucer. Jimmy freaking Kleinsaucer. I just butchered his last name. Kleinsaucer. Dude was a mountain of a man. He still is. He's still with us. Um, just, just a monster. If I was an NFL linebacker and a play started and I noticed it was a running play and I looked up and I saw Jimmy Klein saucer running at me with those just crazy eyes, I'd probably just get out of the way. I wouldn't let Jimmy Klein saucer try to make block a business me. decision. Right there. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Dude just made a career out of blocking for decent Vikings running backs. Yep. Um, he definitely helped the development of a young Adrian Peterson in paving the way. Although Klein Saucer, he wasn't always, he was kind of that like classic H back. He kind of played tight end, kind of played fullback. Um, there were some other fullbacks for Adrian Peterson during that time frame. Tony Richardson, I think is the name that's coming up, mm-hmm. but Klein Saucer, he was a heart and soul guy. Probably wasn't too, too vocal, but I feel like if you were on the team and you saw you were feeling down about a game or something and you saw Jimmy Klein saucer just demolish multiple guys on the field, you get riled up. You just like if he can do it, let's go. It's kind of like the offensive version of Harrison Smith. Almost. Yeah, probably. Like, he just embodies what it means to be a Viking. Mm-hmm. And yes, I think you're right. The stat sheet wouldn't necessarily say that he's a top 10 player for the franchise. I have his stats here, his career stats. You yeah, let's get it? into those. All go right, so uh, we'll kind of go back. Uh, he's a North Dakota native. We probably have some North Dakotans listening to us, hopefully right now. A lot of Vikings fans over there. Uh, and He went to UND back when they were the Fighting Sioux, I believe. They've changed their name since then. Mm-hmm. I forget what it is. Um, second round pick, and I have it here, but could you have named the two guys drafted ahead of us or uh, ahead of Jimmy Klein saucer? This in, was 99. In 1999. Right, so Culpepper. Dante. Yep. That was rookie card there. And his signed and his jersey, jersey right here. <laughs> I can't name the other one without well, looking. Yeah. It's because he completely quit on the team after one practice, Demetrius Underwood. Oh, so. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. I don't even know his name. One of the biggest flubs of a draft pick and football player in Vikings history. So... Uh, those were the only two guys drafted ahead of him for the Vikings that year. Uh, yeah, 
Klein Saucer, second round pick in 99. So right after the 98 perfection season almost. Um, played 13 years in the NFL, all with the Vikings. Um, he probably could have – he was good enough. He probably could have had opportunities elsewhere. But, I mean, if I think of Chad Greenway. If you can play your whole career with one team, it's almost worth taking a pay cut to keep playing with that one team as opposed to getting a little bit more elsewhere if the opportunity is there. But, and Harrison Smith, I think, is continuing that legacy of yeah. Vikings players who just continue to come back and mm-hmm. not leave for – supposedly greener grass yeah so one thing that i thought was cool that i didn't really know until today when i was looking up jimmy's stats but um he blocked for seven of the top eight single season rushing marks in vikings history and that was at least at the time of when he retired so that may be a little bit different now i don't know if dalvin had a better year um above that top eight but yeah klein saucer was a big role in some of the top rushing seasons in vikings history Mm. Uh, including at the time Adrian Peterson's then record, uh, Vikings record of 1760 rushing yards in a season. Um, yeah, I do have his stats. You want to read off some of his stats? Yeah. <clears throat> so 1,688 receiving yards with six touchdowns, 147 rushing yards with one touchdown. <laughs> that yeah. just seems so small. I mean, there. I mean, people have had better rushing games than he yeah. had rushing but he also wasn't a stat sheet guy right and then four kickoff returns for 36 yards yeah so that's when he would they would like squib kick and he'd be the one to pick it up yep and if he didn't fall down then he'd run a few yards and then get tackled or whatever but i just thought the kickoff stats were pretty funny so that's why i added him in there but so coming back to what i said he's not the stat guy but he he is that that franchise guy that like ultimate team player Mm -hmm. i'm here to make everyone else around me better. And I remember watching him as a kid because I was definitely kind of in my prime, like kid years, mm-hmm. my kid era of Vikings fanhood from 99 to 2011. Yeah. He definitely spanned our formative Vikings fans years. Like his entire career went from us being kids, finally kind of waking up like that's when I was actually officially rooting for the Vikings is right. 99, 2000, 2001. Um, you had been, you know, been born into a Vikings fan family. So you obviously were a fan of the Vikings before then, but once you started waking up and like are figuring out, Oh, this is how this works. And Oh, the playoffs mean this. And like, once you figure out the game, Jimmy was a rookie and then he just was a consistently BA Yes. MF, like the whole freaking time. He just bowled over people. Yes. Made everybody else's job easier. He he would be one, maybe not top 10 all time, but top 10 of the 2000s. Yeah. I mean, it, the Vikings are not, they don't have the successes they do during his career in the same way if he's not on the team. His 1,600 receiving yards, yeah, those didn't win a ton of games specifically for the Vikings, but his blocking did. You know, like, and his... And quiet that's, leadership did. That's a tough stat to quantify. You can't quantify like number of blocks laid down. And I mean, yes, we can kind of get to it. Like, yeah, he blocked for seven of the top eight single season rushing marks in Viking mm-hmm. history. So, yeah, there's there's some quantification to that, but it's not as simple as this is the number. Mm-hmm. Right? It's it's just not that simple. And that's why I, I think in a lot of ways that's why the fullback position has kind of petered out a little bit. It's not, yeah. a, it's not a sexy position. So I I think the fullback position has kind of petered out as far as the media goes and as far as fantasy football goes. You're not drafting a fullback in fantasy football, right? Unless they're like a crazy one that also gets every goal line uh, rushing True. attempt like and True. has 20 touchdowns a year, but that doesn't happen. I think if you talk to actual – like there's a reason the fullback is still – in the NFL, it's just as much as ESPN or whoever is going to say, like, oh, that's out. Like, it's a passing league. Who cares about the fullback? Then why are they still on the roster? Why is C.J. Ham still going to have two, three to five more years of his, of his career, whether or not they're worth the Vikings? And if it's not C.J. Ham, the Vikings are still going to have a fullback, right? Like, it's still a position that teams obviously value enough to take a roster spot. It's just like you said, it's not a sexy position. It's not one that gets – a thousand receiving yards a year like but your running back's not going to get a thousand rushing yards if you don't have a good fullback 
And if you don't have a good offensive line, it's all an extension of each other. So, yeah, he's not a big stat sheet guy, but he makes the other guys look good. Side note, I would really like to see CJ Ham get more touches in those goal line situations. I think yeah. he shines in those moments. I'm, I don't have numbers in front of me to prove that, mm-hmm. but I think he does. I am surprised it didn't go that way more earlier in the year when it became in this previous 23 season, when it became apparent that Madison was not an elite, just under Dalvin cook, kind of a Mm -hmm. great running back. I am surprised they didn't turn to him more. Granted the running back room did have some options. I mean, yeah, Ty Chandler took a while to warm up. They traded for cam Akers. He got hurt. Well, even before he got hurt, they seemed hesitant to make the switch. I don't know. I, I think they were a little, timid on making the switch at the running back position which whatever hopefully that's not the case this year but yeah i think maybe they did a disservice not turning to cj ham when they could have because he is a bruiser he's not quite klein saucer level but he's almost there he's up there yeah and i think i think too maybe not even in just goal line situations but other teams aren't necessarily going to expect that he'll get the ball all the time, and you can run those fullback dive plays and maybe be kind of productive just on the sheer surprise factor alone of, oh, they actually gave the ball to the fullback. He Absolutely. wasn't just blocking. So I don't know. I would love to see C.J. Ham step up in a big way this year. Um, we'll see. We'll yeah, see what happens. For Klein, sure. Klein Saucer, though, man, he was, he was a dude. Yeah, I... He's one that, I don't know, you see those memes every once in a while where it's like, guys will just sit around for hours and just name random former NFL players. <laughs> Klein Saucer is like the perfect example of that. Like, oh, remember Jimmy Klein Saucer? Like, I just, he brings a smile to my face when I think about like how much fun I had watching him. And again, he wasn't a crazy stat sheet guy. Do you remember the movie 51st States? Yes, actually, oddly enough, <laughs> we just watched that last night. <laughs> oh, no, no way. <laughs> yeah, last night. So he's top of mind. Yeah. Yeah, he makes a, not him acting-wise, but his uh, highlight, a highlight of him catching a touchdown Yes, makes an appearance in that movie. The best part was the the brother of... Because <laughs> yeah, they, they're... <laughs> he's like, I bet you Jimmy Klein thought you catches it in the end zone. <laughs> And then the play actually develops as he predicted it. Yeah, because it was a taped Yeah, it was the game. rerun that they watch every night. <laughs> and then uh, the dad throws the shoe at him or something <laughs> afterwards. Like, you idiot. <laughs> uh, I should rewatch that scene. That's a good, that's a funny movie. It was a good movie. I don't, I didn't pick it. I was doing something else and I came upstairs and that's what my wife was watching. Nice. So. She's got good taste. It's a good one. We've been a kind of on an Adam Sandler kick lately. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. There's definitely some hits and misses with Adam Sandler. Some of them are pretty awesome, but some of them are pretty bad. But Fifty First States, that's a good one. That is a keeper. Yeah, I like that one. All right. Well, you sent me another article uh, written by good friend of the show, Dustin Baker. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a good one. Yeah. Uh, uh, four ways for the Vikings to spend their $17 million in remaining cap space before the season starts. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, last week we, we talked about a different one of Dustin's articles, uh, some of the biggest losers on the Vikings after the draft who may be in a worse spot after that. And I liked that conversation. People seem to like that conversation. So, yeah, I figured we'd keep it going. Um, definitely, if you're listening to this, please do yourself a favor. Go check out that article on vikingsterritory.com. It's a few days old at this point, and we're recording on Monday the 13th. So by the time you listen to us, it might be a couple more days old. But it's still a good read, and I don't think, unless they sign one of these guys before you get to that article, it's not going to get out of date. Um, But yeah, Dustin lists out, or he explains, the Vikings currently have around $17 million in cap space right now. And importantly, that's before... Um, they sign the rest of their draft picks. So that's going to change up a little bit. J.J. McCarthy is going to get something like a four, or, yeah, four year with a fifth year option, but it's going to be worth 25 ish million dollars. So I don't know what the guarantee is going to be on that. Probably most of it, but however that breaks down, 
they've got a decent chunk of change to be able to go out and sign a guy that's requisite of a small, you know, decent chunk of change. So Dustin listed out four players that could be good fits for the team uh, and would probably cost a little bit of money, but not breaking the bank. Jared Goff, $180 million guaranteed type of money. So what do you think? You, you read the article, did you? I, <coughs> excuse me. Yes, I did read the article. Um, and I was kind of surprised, actually, by the last two. We can start with the first two. The first two don't seem that out of reach Mm -hmm. i don't think for the vikings um the second two are a little intriguing yeah to say the least so (coughs) sorry oh you're good this this ipa it's it's getting (laughs) it's getting you so i think in the article dustin does kind of list out in order from like least to best favorable Mm -hmm. options for the vikings um so the the least but still would be a good choice he lists out hunter renfro former mm-hmm. raiders wide receiver um and he listed him out because he's currently a free agent 28 years old right now so theoretically has a couple years left at least in the tank um renfro had a pretty good 2021 season i think over a thousand yards receiving um but since then has been kind of iffy you know not not quite as up to par with that 2021 season uh, so there's something there. He has flashed and shown that he's got he's got something. He, if you play him right, if you give him a, good, a decent quarterback and the right system, he could be a really good wide receiver three, which is what Dustin's saying. Um, so he might be the cheapest of the options on this list. I'm just guessing, but it would still be good because currently the wide receiver three, I think, is Brandon Powell for mm-hmm. what it's worth uh, on the Vikings. So. Hunter Renfro, I, I tend to agree. I'm going to go ahead and say I tend to agree with all of these choices, but um, I'm interested to see your opinion on the last two. Yeah, I, I think Hunter Renfro is a good option. Um, I don't I don't know why Brandon Powell isn't a good option at that wide receiver three position. I know he's a little undersized, mm-hmm. um, but, man, he, he had a great season with well, – Minnesota. And I'm not disagreeing with you, year. but I heard Dustin say on one of the things he's on, and he's probably said it a few times, if it weren't for Brandon Powell's game-clinching touchdown catch in the Josh Dobbs Atlanta Falcons game, um, we would all have a way lesser opinion on Brandon Powell. That's probably true. And not for anything that he did poorly. It's just that he's got that highlight, you know, heavenly catch that won the game for us uh almost as exciting as D- josh dobbs whole play in that game um so yeah that is skewing i think we would all if we sat down and thought about it that game that catch is probably skewing our thoughts on him a little bit but it's not like he's garbage outside of that catch you know that was his only touchdown yeah. of the season mm-hmm. um but he was still targeted uh quite a bit 44 targets uh with 29 catches mm-hmm and i don't know he just he had he he has that like that aura about him almost that that on the field presence kind of like we were talking about with jimmy klein saucer a little bit ago like cool yeah careful man careful you are not putting him in jimmy's era it's it's a little bit of a apples to oranges comparison i mean it's wide receiver to i know what you're saying though that but he he has that like come on guys let's go kind of mentality and I don't know. I, I like Brandon Powell a lot, and I would be perfectly fine if the Vikings brought him back. Well, he's he's back. He's, they signed him back. He's on the team. And if he were the wide receiver mm-hmm. three, I guess is what I was trying sure. to yep. finish. And if the other guys didn't oh, didn't usurp him for that title, mm-hmm. you know. Obviously, one and two are pretty well covered. Um, that wide receiver three position is definitely still kind of up in the air at this point, but JJ Jordan Addison, they've got one and two kind of locked down. I don't mm-hmm. think barring catastrophic injury, uh, we see <laughs> yeah. anything different that way, but Hunter Renfro wouldn't be a bad addition. And yes, he's cheap and proven that he can, he can be productive. Yeah, for sure. Next on the list, uh, old friend, Dalton Reisner. I don't know how he's not on a team. Not only just not with the Vikings. I don't know how somebody hasn't picked him up. 
he doesn't seem like a jerk off the field, which granted you never really know anybody. And is it possible he's putting on a good persona and social media and in locker room interviews or whatever to make us think he's a good guy when really he's not sure. I guess that's possible, but I don't think that's the case. I think he actually is a good dude. Um, and he's tweeted out, like, I'm not looking to be the highest paid guard in the league or anything, which we're not in negotiations with him. We we're, we don't know what he and his agent are asking for, but it feels like he should be on a team right now. It feels like he should be a Viking right now, but it definitely feels like somebody, 31 other teams should have picked him up. He played well last year. Like he, he got Ezra Cleveland traded out of the team. Like, well, and, and his flaw is that he's not a run blocker, but we didn't have a run game to speak of anyways last mm-hmm. year. So that's not really his fault. And we didn't really get to see him run block. I mean, you can't blame the running game on him mm-hmm. solely. And I think we, as Vikings fans, we would all agree that Alexander Madison was not the answer at running back one. And you can't blame that on your, your guard. Mm-hmm. You just can't. Yeah. Um, so I'm shocked as well that yeah. he's not signed anywhere and shocked that the Vikings haven't brought him back. I feel like he is another just team guy all around and even more so than Brandon Powell. Like mm-hmm. I watched plenty of his locker room interviews. I watched plenty of game footage and I, I even spliced together a great <laughs> little montage of his like foot kicking, like, yeah, check was, that out on TikTok. It was yeah. awesome. Um, <laughs> but looking at the guards that we have currently, you have Blake Brandell. Who is probably penciled in right now. If they were playing a game right now, yes. he'd be the starter at left guard. And then you have Ed Ingram, of course, at right guard. Yep. And then you have two rookies. You have Henry Boyd and you have Tyrese Robinson. Mm-hmm. That's as your, far as listed out as guards, that is, specifically. Those are the four guards currently on the roster it's may so that's going to change for sure maybe yeah but man i i don't know if you're quasi you have to be on the phone regularly with dalton reisner's agent who i know he just hired a new one yeah not terribly long ago he switched over to drew rosenhaus who yeah is maybe he's got more of a jerk persona but he gets guys signed like he does deals yep teams are not afraid to do deals with him i'm sure there are a handful of vikings current vikings that employ drew rosenhaus as their agent like he just gets deals done so dalton reisner will play in the nfl this season and if he doesn't like what in the world what do the teams know that we don't he will play in the nfl hopefully the vikings sign him or if they don't I'd love to say, like, oh, can you believe how great Blake Brandell has been playing? Like, that's amazing. A pro bowler. Like, that's what I'd love to see. But I don't know. Dalton Reisner played pretty darn well. I'm comfortable with him. So, anyways, of of the four in this list, he's, to me, the most surprising. And I would put him higher. On As the, the one you'd most want the Vikings to sign? Yes. Okay. I could see that. Given, given how he played last year, given – just not just the on the field performance, but the off the field stuff too. Mm-hmm. I just I have a lot of respect for the guy, and I, I want him to be a Viking. Yeah, I want to I want to root for him. Good thing ha- good things happened for the offensive line when Dalton Reisner became the starter. Yes, agreed. Yeah, I think that's all we need to know. So the next one is a guy who, admittedly, I I guarantee I've heard his name because he was a Packer for a few years, um, but he's bounced around a little bit. Um, But I never would have thought to bring his name up before reading this article. It's a guard, and Dustin lists him out as just offensive guard, so I wonder if he has some flexibility there. Uh, Guard Greg Van Roten, Van Rotten. I'm going to go with Roten. There's only one T. Yeah. Um, It's 34 years old, a guard who has bounced around the last few years. I think last year he was uh, with the Jets, maybe. I might be wrong on that. I know he's played for the Jets and the Raiders and the Panthers and obviously the Packers for a few years. Um, But he's still getting it done. Like He's still a serviceable starter-level offensive lineman. Yeah, he's 34 years old. But at this point in the year, if you're signing a guy, you're not looking for somebody to be on your team for the next 10 years. You're looking to fill some position needs. And, I mean, 34 is not ancient. It's pretty old for 
like a running back, but offensive lineman, if you're healthy, you can still play for quite a few years. Um, so I don't know. You 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 said you were a little iffy on the the next two guys. So. I'm iffy on the next two, mostly because of their age. And you mentioned it. I mean, 34, and then the next player who will rename remain nameless until we get to him is 37 yeah um but 34 and 37 that's still on the upper edge of things for oh, yeah. nfl players and so that's what concerns me hunter renfro dalton reisner they're a little younger mm-hmm. they're they've, they've got a little bit more life in them and what i don't want is uh i don't want to go through all of this turnover year after year. And I understand that there's some of that, and that's just how the NFL works Mm -hmm. in 2024. That's just a natural byproduct of the way that the league is set up. Um, I'm not oblivious to that, but I'm an idealist. I'm a pie-in-the-sky kind of thinker. I'm, I'm always thinking positively, optimistically, and I don't want to sign these cheap one-year contracts and then watch the guys leave like you and i both we we kind of form attachments to these players because we watch them play because we Mm -hmm. watch every single game and i don't know i don't like for the same reasons that i want dalton reisner back because he was so awesome to watch last (laughs) year yeah i don't want to sign another guy to take the same position basically Mm -hmm. yeah Um, if you you sign greg van roten you're probably definitely not signing another yes. guard. And it, you, you have it here, and, and I know Dustin covered this in his article too. Yes, he would probably be an upgrade even over Brandell, who's already signed to a contract and will be playing for the Vikings next year. Mm-hmm. And he might even start over Brandell. Brandell might be the depth guy that comes in behind Yeah, Yeah, Roden. I would assume that if they sign this guy or Dalton Reisner or anybody who has more experience. And this is why I would make a terrible GM because I'm not thinking about the on the field product mm-hmm. this year. I'm thinking I, my my heartstrings are attached, and I'm thinking about you know the legacy for my kids. And I'm like <laughs> I don't know. I I think about all the wrong things when it comes to signing yeah. players. So I will I will say if we take a step back, I have the same thought process. Like I want them to keep. I want them to have homegrown guys and keep signing these guys and keep the core together for year in and year out forever. I want every player to be like Harrison Smith and just stay with the team every year or Jimmy Kleinsaucer, you know. However, the realistic thought process we should have is every team, if they're even the best, you know, voted number one or number two in the NFLPA, like best place to play or whatever, even those teams – just that's what that's where the salary cap comes in you can't always keep signing guys over and over and keep guys forever and ever this isn't the new york yankees um so you're gonna but you are gonna have some of those guys you're gonna have harrison smith you're gonna have a guy who hopefully in uh justin jefferson he's gonna be the the hyped up guy that we buy our kids his jersey you're gonna have i mean christian derisaw brian o'neill hopefully if JJ McCarthy works out like that, those kinds of guys, you're always going to have those, those guys that stay on the team. They are the one that the team, he's the highest selling Jersey for that team. So because of that, you're going to need every once in a while, there's going to be, Hey, it is a revolving door at guard right now because we do have two of the top tackles in the entire league and they're both being paid requisite money, which hopefully Darisaw gets, I mean, he, he's getting his fifth year option, but That's another big contract that's going to come up. So, yes, as a fan and as somebody who likes this team and likes the players and follows it on Twitter and all the social media and everything when they put these guys out, um, I like to like the guys, you know. I like to be fans of the players, not just the logo and the, you know, the team. Um, But, yeah, it's – and I think you'd agree. It's realistic to think, like, some of these guys are just – you can't have them every year. they got to bounce around. Yeah. Yep. And and again, that's just that's kind of how it is in the yep. league right now. I mean, Sam Darnold is a Viking. If you would have told me that two years ago, I'd have been like, no way. There's no way that guy's a Viking. But mm-hmm. here we are. And I mean, there's I mean, in my mind, there's no way Kirk Cousins isn't a Viking. Yeah, it's still weird to think. Like, so I don't know. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to keep pace with what goes on in the league and all the 
trades and acquisitions and draft picks. But at the end of the day, we're not the GMs, and we trust in them to get the right guys on the field and mm-hmm. put together the best possible team to hopefully go out and win a championship. Yeah. So. And just to circle it on back with uh, Van Roten here, he kind of reminds me of – the guy from 2019, Josh Klein, Mm -hmm. same position, offensive guard. Um, He, you know, had had, I think at the time Josh Klein was signed by the Vikings. He'd played for the Patriots for a handful of years and the Titans for a couple of years. Um, And then immediately he was a free agent signing by the Vikings, got like a three-year contract, was immediately announced as a starter, even though at the time he was quote unquote, a little bit older at like 29 or 30. Um, but he played really well for that season, 2019. And then I think it was injuries. I think he just got beat up so much that ultimately the Vikings cut him after that year and he never latched on anywhere else and he retired like within a few months of that. So, but when the Vikings signed him, I mean, he, he was a serviceable, very good guard and you didn't have to worry about his play. He was one of the bright spots on the line that year. So, uh, Van Roten kind of reminds me of that interestingly enough right now they're both the same age they're both like 34 right now so definitely injuries for Josh Klein was why he's not still playing but I think Van Roten would be a good patchwork player for one year maybe two depending on how it worked out yeah and to be fair I wouldn't be opposed to a player like him sure um, especially because you know we convert one of the dark side to <laughs> to the good guys it's been a few years since he played for the Packers. i know yeah. i know but the it's always you seem to like signing former packers for some reason it's always good when we can get somebody yeah into purple and gold rather than that green that ugly green um but one more player on this list yeah uh, and surprising actually uh because this name to me um one didn't even know he was still playing um <laughs> And two, he he's kind of a, a juggernaut player. Mm-hmm. Calais Campbell. Yeah. And defensive tackle is a position that the Vikings need to address. And they I I don't know. They Yeah, what who who do they have right now after Harrison Phillips? I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um I mean you've got a few guys. Um You've got Phillips. They drafted Levi Drake Rodriguez. Oh, yeah, who they're really excited about, but still seventh round pick or whatever it is. Um, And I think Taki Taimani was a Hmm. free agent or an undrafted free agent. Okay. Um, Yeah, anyways. um, Is is Tillery going to play on the inside or is I he forgot about guy? him. Yeah, I don't know. So with this 3-4 defense, I always get confused on who is a defensive tackle or like a defensive end or however they categorize that. But I think Tillery, I don't know. I'm not sure. Is he the guy that's going to play in the middle? I'm not sure. Well, they have him listed right now as DL on okay. the website here, which means defensive lineman. Mm-hmm. Um, but – like, uh, for example, let's see here. Oh, man. Still looking for defensive linemen here. But yeah, either way, I think Clays Campbell, he's bounced around a few years, a few teams the last handful of years, but I think he's still playing pretty well. Like, mm-hmm. he, yeah, he gets his chunk of change. He's also not going to cost $30 million at this point. Um, I think Dustin Baker points out that he was drafted the year after Adrian Peterson was. So just to kind of put that into perspective on his age a little bit, what would you say he was, 36, 37? He's 37. He'll turn 38 on September 1st. Oh, so essentially for this year, he's a 38-year-old player. But, I mean, if you're still producing and if it's something you can add him to a rotation and not necessarily have to have him play – um, every snap, like that, that could be, and he's a starter. Um, I mean, other than his rookie season, his rookie season, he didn't start any games, but he played in 16 of them since then he's started pretty much every game that he's played in, uh, for the Cardinals, for the Jags, Mm -hmm. for the Ravens. And then last year for the Falcons, um, last year for the Falcons, he started and played in 17 games. Yeah. 
So I'd, I'd have to dig a little deeper to find like his snap count, but you don't start a guy just on posterity alone. Like, no, oh, yeah. you're Calais Campbell, so we'll put you in for a couple of plays and then pull you out just to say we started you. Mm-hmm. That's not how it works. Um, so to start 17 games, that's a big deal as a defensive lineman. Yeah, absolutely. At 37 years old <laughs> yeah, last year. Absolutely. So, yeah, he would definitely be an upgrade, uh, a good piece ad- added to the Vikings. Um, he won't break the bank, but he's going to get his – payday um he's gonna be more of that edge guy because that's he's he's played defensive end mm, okay most of his career um uh, for the cardinals and the jags and then the even the ravens yeah so yeah he'll be on the outside he's he's one of those quarterback hunters for sure but i also know dustin baker if you've watched any of his stuff at all in the last couple of months like he does frequently drop Clayus campbell's name as like so yeah it'd be a good good get for the vikings so uh i tend to agree with dustin baker's takes he's usually correct um so same with this one right here i'd be excited honestly i'd be okay if they signed any of these guys um as long as it didn't you know break the bank for any of them which in may if you're signing a free agent it's probably not going to break the bank so yeah, I'd be excited if they made any of these additions. And if they didn't, then hopefully it's because they really like one of the rookies or one of the Blake Brandells of the world or somebody they they brought in as a free agent. So we'll see. Well, the Vikings have $16.6 million okay. in cap space right now. So a little bit of money to play with mm-hmm. for this current year. And I think, I don't know if that includes, because they signed like three draft picks the other day. Um, and obviously... Uh, JJ still needs to sign Dallas Turner still needs to sign they're both first round picks so they're not going to be I mean no rookie right now is going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars right now but they're still first round picks like they're gonna and they get a substantial payday as well so yep so yeah and that'll be that'll be really interesting too to see how those two players develop yeah in Vikings are in good hands right now and they didn't just pay Jared Goff 170 something million dollars guaranteed for a four year extension. So 53 million a year. That's wild. That is wild. Good, good for the Lions. If Jared Goff, good for Jared. Too. Yeah, good for him. If he figured something out, obviously they had a great year in this past season and they're set up to be really good for a while. But I don't know. I'm still not convinced. <laughs> It'll be interesting to yeah. see how it all shakes out. All right, man, we've had a few of these. What are your thoughts? I know this isn't your absolute favorite category of beers, but, man, it I, might be mine. I like it. Um, definitely something that I would go back to again. Um, I like the name, Shark Wrangler. That's funny, and I like the, the can art for sure. I feel like the can artwork is, like, the longer you look at it, the better it gets. Like It's just got <laughs> three sharks literally being wrangled by i'm still gonna go for it some santa claus looking garden gnomes and it looks like the gnomes are doing pretty good so <laughs> so uh shout good good job whoever did this can art uh i like the beer a lot anything with simcoe hops i'm i'm a sucker for that's probably my favorite yes they are they're delicious uh i i don't have anything bad to say about them yeah so I, i've enjoyed it they're yeah good. good beer exile maybe someday we will uh, add you to the long list of sponsors we hopefully will have in the future. <laughs> but until then, I'm happy to pay for every single one of these. So thank you, Exile, for making such a great beer. Beer is good. <laughs> beer is good. And, and stuff. stuff. <laughs> All right, man. Anything else before we close it out? No. I think we should remind people where they can find us. Yeah. We're, we're everywhere. Google the skull hop and you'll find us. We're on Twitter or X if you really want to call it that. I don't. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Reddit, uh, or else YouTube. For sure, YouTube and Spotify if you prefer to watch your podcasts. Uh, that's where you can watch us. And Spotify also if you just want to listen. Apple Podcasts. Leave us a, a rate, a review, like, subscribe, all the fun stuff. Um, and we, we don't usually say it, but I feel like we should throw it out there every once in a while. We have 
some merch available. Um, we do. What is it? Uh, T Public. T Public. Yep. T Public dot com. Um, I'm not sure if we have a specific link we can throw out there. If you go to our website, go to our website. Uh, yep. The yes. Skullhop dot com. There's a merch tab, and it'll take you right where you need to go. Uh, they're fun shirts. I like them. I need to get at least a couple more. Uh, I even got a couple of mugs one time. So, and we've said it a few times. We we're collecting things for a giveaway. So keep your eyes peeled. We're gonna do a giveaway at some point. I don't know when, but it'll be there. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> yeah. Let us know what you think would be fun to have in a giveaway. Currently, we have like a mug, some stickers, a magnet. We still have a shirt. We do have that what's that, a size large shirt that we can mm-hmm. throw in there. Yep. Um, so, yeah, let us know if there's an, anything else you think we should throw in there. Yeah. Episode 40, though. It's crazy to think that one year ago today, yep. we released episode one. That is wild. I didn't know it was today. Like, that's, yeah. that's crazy. To the day, May 13th. I might have to go back and listen to that. Go back and listen to episode one. Let us know how much better we are right now. It's on everybody's to-do list for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's been a fun year, and I'm excited for more. The next 30 years. <laughs> are you going to pay my mortgage, too? I, hopefully that'd, this podcast pays our mortgage. That'd be awesome. All right, man. We, we just cheers, but let's skull. Let's skull. Let's skull. Best episode yet. I need to trim my mustache. It's collecting everything. Are we done? Is that it? I think so. All right. I felt like we could maybe have gone a little longer, but well, right. what do we got? We can we can cut this out. What else do we want to talk about? No. I just felt like we had like. I just felt like we had twenty seconds more of. Okay. Let's do it. It's all good. All right, no, let's let's do these twenty seconds. What, what are we going to talk about? I don't know. We're not going to cut this out. We're just going to leave it in. <laughs> Most people don't make it to the end anyways. That would be fun. Let us know if you made it this far and you just kind of peeked behind the the curtain a little bit. <laughs> On-air business meeting. On-air really business quick. meeting. All right. We got to get an actual business meeting on the calendar. Yeah. We're going to do this before we leave tonight okay. because coming up. In not too long, we're we're gonna take a little beer tour of Iowa. Absolutely, I can't wait for that. And we got to put some final details on paper for that. Yeah, we do. We have we have an outline, right? We yeah. have we, so. we we have some ideas on paper, and we mm-hmm. have a rough outline. But we need to we need to start finalizing those things. I think the next time next thing I want to do is reach out to some of the the breweries that we've identified to see how interested they are in having us. Obviously, if it's business hours and we're paying customers, like anybody will have us come in and be, you know, patrons. But I'd love it if somebody was like, "Yeah, we'll we'll show you something, or we'll we'll have you talk to a master brewer." Like that'd be behind the curtain. That'd be amazing. Like like, fun. We've we've done our own little home brew, you know, experience. But if we could see how how the big guys do it, X whatever is like, hey, yeah, this is our large scale production. Like that'd be super cool to see. Yeah. Well, if you're a brewer out there. And you're in Iowa. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll, and I think you said this last week, and I will, I will reiterate, we will go out of our way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because we've kind of identified a rough, like, yep, not even really rough, a pretty specific route. But if there's a brewer way off that route, like, hey, you're going to be interested in us. We're going to repay that interest. We'll be there. Yeah. I we'll like be I like beer. Beer is good. Beer is good. And, and stuff, stuff. <laughs> go right. check that video out too <laughs> we'll link to it in the description below all right i think now we can yeah i'm sorry that. i just it felt like we had scold and it was like all right, i guess now we we're can, done we could scold like every 30 seconds and i don't think it would ever be enough that's like, true not for me maybe for the listeners though but, although if you're a real vikings fan you're gonna scold right along with us let us know what you're drinking while you're listening to us maybe it's water and that's okay it could be anything. It could be coffee. I usually, when I listen back, because I do listen back to every every episode, because I'm an egotistical maniac. It's usually <laughs> coffee that I'm that I'm drinking, because it's at work and stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> did we do it? Now we can officially school. We did we can, it. We can tie a bow on this episode. I I ended it prematurely. Now Evan just needed a little bit more, and that's okay. I, I feel like 
I mean, I had this much more beer. I do have quite a bit of beer left, too. You, so. you poured a new one. I did. I still have... <gasps> oh, oh Evan. But it's all right. I'll... I gotta have one while I edit. Sure. Post the post production. That's important. This This is the best episode yet. <laughs> Every single one is the best yet. Alright, man. Skull. Cool. Hey Vikings fans, Evan here from the Skull Hop and we just wanted to say thank you again so much for listening to the Skull Hop and we also wanted to take one more opportunity to let you know that this episode of the Skull Hop has been brought to you by Big Top Ventures. If you're considering taking an all-inclusive trip to either Mexico or Jamaica, reach out to our friends at Big Top Ventures at BigTopVenturesLLC at gmail.com. Once again, that's Big Top Ventures LLC at gmail.com. You can get the lowest rate possible on several all inclusive resorts throughout the region. Big Top Ventures, step right up to your next big adventure. And thanks again for listening to the Skull Hop. Skull.